Hey, PCTI Stemmers. Here's the second video of this unit. I know we've been on it for more than two days, but with assemblies and things, it's um, hasn't been very consistent. So we already discussed why the Industrial Revolution began, um, some of its geographic causes, its social causes, political causes, its economic causes. But now we're going to get more specific as to why the Industrial Revolution began in England. So, you know, we learned why did the Renaissance begin in Italy and why did... The Enlightenment began in France. So it's also important to know why did it begin in England and not someplace else. Um, you see a photo there of um, hard times. That's where we read um, the chapter Murdering the Innocents about Sissy Jupe. Um, so we're trying to uh, keep learning about England and the Industrial Revolution. So first you may wonder, wonder why. Why did it begin in England? So if this is a map of Europe, um, Great Britain is right there, that big island nation. So what made that so unique as to why the revolution would begin there? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. Um, it had the perfect conditions for it to start there. And some of those um, perfect conditions are because it had the resources. Remember in the last video, we said that like, all the trees were basically cut down. I mean, not all the trees, but all the forests um, were gone at this point. But there was coal in England. And Mining coal there is nothing new. Um, it went back to before Roman times, and then it, it increased during Roman times. But if you see, and you know, this is more than England. This is um, coal mines up north, you know, Scotland and and Wales. They, these are where the big mines were. So it did have that coal that was necessary for steam power to run factories, um, for transportation of goods and raw materials, whether by steamboat or by rail. So that's important. Um, we also mentioned it had colonies. And, you know, there's that saying you see there on that little um, visual that the sun never set on the British Empire because it had so many different colonies around the globe and, and every hemisphere. So because it had so many colonies, it could obtain raw materials from all throughout the globe. And also those are people it could sell its finished goods and products there too. Um, the workforce... There it was large. Um, there was a lot of people who were able to work. I mean, they were educated, which is important because they could read the manuals and how to operate machines, um, all sorts of things like that. So, you know, you need people to work for you on these machines and <clears throat> that happened. I wanted to mention um, a random fact. Um, we learned about Francis Bacon and the scientific revolution earlier this year. And Bacon wrote about freedom, right? Something that uh, the Enlightenment came from this revolution. Um, and he said that people would have more freedom and liberty once machines became invented. And some people will say, well, look at what the, 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 um, the Industrial Revolution did with these people working in these factories. They had no freedom. But if you look then more over time, think of how much like time I have to do other things now that I have like... Um, say like dishwashers to do dishes or, you know, vacuum cleaners, right? It's how machines make your daily, everyone's daily life free to do other things. If it's your job, it may be not, maybe not as much. Um, also, we mentioned that the government in England was very tolerant of business and they were flexible. Whatever businesses sort of need, they could see out of their way, they could help, right? There was no big um, revolutions or turmoil going on in the government at the time. And they were really able to just sort of stay off, back off and, and let um, business do their things. Also, um, there was a lot of capital in the businesses in England. So we mentioned this before as well. So um, companies could make money. And they would take that money to buy more things, to make more money, right? And um, to, you know, buy more machines to make more goods and, and keep that cycle going. Also look at the geography of England. Not just did it have coal, but it had a lot of um, access to water. For one thing, Great Britain is an island. So you have water all around it. But also um, there's lots of rivers going on there. And that rivers was good so you could have your factories on the river um, cause the steam power could fuel the factories. Um, once again, once you finish products, you could then send them out to the world or you could obtain your raw materials. Um, uh, so it helped for transportation as well. In fact, no place in England is more than, um, 20 miles from water. So that shows you just like, you know, that there's no big deserts, right? Um, if you needed goods to get somewhere, it would get there.
Okay. Also, some more to deal with the geography is the climate. Um, if anyone's been um, to England or any of the British um, areas, uh, it's often foggy. It's often damp. It's often misty, a little rain, sort of like what we have outside at school today. It's very, it's a very British day today. Um, but that damp weather is good for growing cotton. And, you know, eventually, uh, Britain, you know, it obtained cotton from our colonies, it obtained cotton from India, it obtained cotton from Egypt, but initially they were able to make their own cotton. Because remember, the Industrial Revolution began with the textile industry, so they are making fabric. Um, so this then makes sense that the first thing they're really going to industrialize is the textile industry, because lots of cotton grows there, because it has lots of rain. All right, so this is why the Industrial Revolution began in England. Um, if you have any questions, we'll definitely <coughs> – steam power in here. We'll go over it next class. All right, see you then.